friends i hope you are enjoying this series uh, which we are doing on a uh, short story in our times and uh, we have particular references to make to the uh, western world uh, europe uh, in particular and uh, the short story mode is uh, important for us for a number of reasons and one important reason is that it entertains people and it entertains people in the crowd not just one to one it's it's a it's a mode you know that uh, puts the writer the narrator in front of an audience and the the narrator then talks to the audience this i think is the uh, you know <coughs> point that i have to make myself uh, i hope uh, uh, professor pal nagpal uh, would agree with me uh, who will be uh, who's, who teaches english in uh, the department uh, in janki devi memorial college delhi university and uh, professor pal nagpal is a, is a good reader apart from many other things not not just a scholar but a good reader of literature and for that reason you know we have her with, uh, with us today and uh, she'll be talking about uh, agatha christie as a writer of short stories now i didn't know about this that uh, you know she also wrote short stories uh, she wrote novels and um, the novels are uh, famous uh, in, in the modern world and many have been if not most have been filmed and as films also they have appealed to a larger audience and uh, she is a known to known uh, name to reckon with and uh, there are many things that i would like to ask professor pal nagpal but that will be uh, in the course of the discussion but at the moment let me uh, say that uh, she has to tell us about uh, the uh, detective writer the writer of detective fiction uh, just doing in short stories well, what is she doing in the short stories to, to begin with so, so uh, thank I, you uh, professor prakash and uh, i'm particularly happy that uh, we are discussing agatha christie today because um, for a long time uh, one has uh, focused on uh, writers who are part of the canon mm. and or writers now uh, you know from different countries they are known writers but agatha christie uh, uh, makes an intervention here because she carries with her uh, a different kind of writing it's not just about uh, detective writing detective fiction but it's also about uh, looking at popular literature and uh, i think uh, that for us uh, uh, is an important uh, point of entry into discussing uh, both uh, uh, crime writing and uh, the work of uh, agatha christie does she write as a woman yes if i may, if i may ask uh, yes in fact that's one of the points that uh, uh, i will be focusing on in today's uh, uh, discussion because uh, she does uh, uh, bring in her point of view as a woman because there are two very distinct detectives that she brings in her writing mm -hmm. and uh, one is a uh, 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 poiro and the other is uh, miss uh, jane marple so and the the two styles are very very distinct very different and it's in miss marple that uh, we really see this kind of the 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 woman's perspective really speaking coming in and uh, in in a very different way of course also in uh, poirot's uh, uh, cases but uh, certainly uh, you know the detective itself is a woman so that i, I think explains it all isn't it remarkable that a woman you know knows so much about the world about yes. the world of crime and uh, you know people are looking at one another uh, from the point of view of who is the murderer <laughs> for instance, i'm just just talking off and and uh, this kind of a knowledge requires a great uh, writerly acumen and yes. uh, and uh, exposure to the world yes and a very very uh, rational uh, bent mm. of mind mm. because um, in a sense there's a almost like as is uh, very famously said that there's a puzzle that's presented as to who has done it who done it mm -hmm. and from there the whole process of arriving at the conclusion and now this whole uh, whatever be the conclusion it's the process that really uh, brings in uh, uh, a lot of value both to the writing and of course uh, you know uh, uh, tremendous writerly acumen is required to actually establish this process it is not easy because it's also a rational process of some kind of reasoning that is there mm. so i'm all ears <laughs> please begin yes. your discussion uh, thank you so uh, today uh, we will be discussing agatha christie uh, uh, who's also known as the queen of uh, crime writing and uh, she was Uh, born in uh, uh, Torquay, that's Devon, England, in 1890, and she lived up to pretty much uh, towards the end of the 20th century, that's 1976. 
So Agatha Christie is, of course, a very, very uh, popular writer of uh, all times, not just of her times. And she has uh, written uh, about 66 detective novels and 14 short story collections. Uh, she also wrote the world's uh, longest running play, uh, The Mousetrap. So uh, uh, books have, uh, uh, you know, sold uh, over 1 billion copies uh, in the English language and also equally so in terms of translation. So uh, as discussed earlier, that uh, we are with Agatha Christie, we are not just looking at the short story, but we are also looking at detective fiction. We're looking at the whole process of crime writing. And uh, in a sense, what started with Edgar Allan Poe's uh, The Purloin Letter, and uh, after which we move on to Arthur Conan Doyle and the famous uh, Sherlock Holmes, and uh, with him, Dr. Watson, uh, with Agatha Christie, who writes after uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, we are looking at uh, detective writing that emerges in the interwar years, that is the years between the First and the Second World War. And uh, there are many uh, uh, very interesting points that come up when we actually place Agatha Christie's writing in the interwar years. Uh, but to first uh, understand the entire structure, she introduces uh, two detectives and we have uh, not an English detective, but we have the Belgian Hercule Poirot. And uh, we have uh, Miss Jane Marple, who's, who stays at uh, St. Mary's Mead. So uh, one needs to ask exactly why does uh, uh, Christie, not really speaking, use an English detective here, but a Belgian in Hercule Poirot. And interestingly, in the other case, we have a woman and a woman who's, uh, who's certainly not a young woman. She's uh, you know, in terms of age, and uh, she's a, a, a single woman, she's a spinster. So, uh, this, uh, these two, uh, I think in the very construction of her detectives, uh, uh, Agatha Christie is making a very important intervention here by first and foremost almost uh, displacing, creating a kind of what, if, you know, I can use a word from uh, the world of drama, a kind of alienation by bringing in a Belgian detective and equally so in Miss Marple. And of course, the, uh, both these have been, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, televised series and films that have been made on uh, Christie's uh, short stories, novels, and so on. Um, in a, a Joan um, um, Akosella, in uh, uh, an article on Agatha Christie, says uh, the following, that uh, the important things that uh, uh, as a writer and as a woman writer, uh, Agatha Christie brings uh, in a sense to the table is the detective's eccentricity. So, uh, you know, uh, for instance, uh, that came with Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, that is when Holmes was not chasing a criminal, uh, he lies on the couch uh, and so on. And the second uh, rule was uh, the absolutely central role of uh, ratiocination. So the detective, uh, when he's working, shows almost no emotion. And these are two uh, important aspects that is, uh, you know, uh, a kind of reasoning that's there and uh, a very dispassionate point of view. So when the detective is engaging with the situation, uh, there is a very dispassionate uh, kind of uh, uh, distancing that is there from the situation so that the detective is able to assess and look at all the points that are there in, in front of, uh, you know, uh, either be it Hercule Poirot or be it uh, uh, Miss Marple. What's particularly remarkable about Agatha Christie's uh, writing is that these two detectives are very, very different. And they also bring to the reader two very different flavors. Of course, each story has its own. But in terms of the whole process, there are these are two very distinct styles also. And uh, uh, what begins in the interwar years, and you know, she writes right through the uh, period of the Second World War and post uh, 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 war, uh, in the post war scenario as well. So, uh, one needs to also place uh, these stories uh, in terms of, uh, you know, this kind of an understanding. So, um, there is a very layered uh, kind of characterization that we see in. Uh, uh, Miss Marple, and in the case of Hercule 
Poiro we see an entirely different presentation. So what is very interesting is that we are looking at the genre of mystery of detective fiction and this in a sense is related to both what is uh, in terms of convention known as highbrow and lowbrow literature. It would uh, uh, be a mistake to uh, you know uh, place it in the lowbrow literature but detective uh, fiction, detective writing in a sense should be looked at as somewhere in the middle partaking from both uh, these uh, uh, categories. Uh, that is if we choose to look at it in terms of these categories. So uh, we will look at one story with each of these uh, detectives. Uh, primarily we will be looking at Murder in the Muse, a story from the late 1920s um, in which the detective is Hercule Poirot and very uh, briefly we will also look at uh, another story that is uh, Miss Marple tells a story. This is uh, much later actually and uh, uh, is uh, it was it was written uh, uh, in the post uh, Second World War period uh, and was published uh, only in the 1970s. In fact, posthumously. So, um, Murder in the Muse is actually part of the four cases uh, in which Hercule Poirot appears, and uh, uh, it's interesting that this particular story begins with a reference to the gunpowder plot and uh, the Guy Fox Day. So, um, and uh, once you've read the story, you also feel that, you know, this is a giveaway, but something that you can't really catch right at the beginning. So, remember, remember the 5th of November, Gunpowder, Treason and Plot. So, it was an unsuccessful plot. So, but here, uh, the murder has taken place. So, what is really speaking so unsuccessful about it? And uh, 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 yeah, if you look at uh, the, the introduction, the description of, uh, uh, Hercule Poirot, uh, who is a companion, uh, you know, who is with Inspector Jap uh, from Scotland Yard. So here, the Chief Inspector's companion, a small elderly man with an egg-shaped head and large military-looking moustaches, was smiling to himself. So um, I'm I'm struck by the fact that here, um, uh, uh, Agatha Christie is using uh, detectives who's who are very seasoned in a sense in terms of age experience and are presenting a kind of a unique wisdom in a sense um, that uh, is uh, 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 powered uh, by observation. So um, and uh, it's uh, very important to uh, bring another point here which is that all this writing is from the 1920s. Now this is also in terms of canonical literature the time of high modernism and uh, where we are talking about streams of consciousness and so on in terms of modernism. In the case of detective writing, we carry something that the 19th century has actually given us, which is realism and a kind of objective point of view. So um, detective fiction actually thrives and takes and draws tremendously in a sense from uh, 19th century realism, if I may, uh, uh, you know, uh, put it like this. So uh, here I'd uh, like to ask Professor Prakash what he really thinks about this because, I mean, on the one hand, we have T.S. Eliot's Wasteland and we're talking about Virginia Woolf. And on the other hand, writing in the 1920s, we are looking at Agatha Christie's, um, you know, detective fiction, crime writing. Actually, <coughs> your answer has the question and uh, you're quite aware as to the problems of uh, writing in the 20th century. Uh, that somebody, you know, uh, who is supposed to live in the uh, post-war years, she is writing it in the 1920s and one war has ended and another is going to begin very soon. Uh, it's not uh, very, very far away in time that the Second World War also will begin. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, this writer, uh, rather than the uh, high modernists as, as you call them, is able to look around the scene herself. So uh, this realism uh, that, that was there in the 19th century, and uh, there were detective fiction writers and Dickens himself was using uh, th this genre. Uh, it was at the back of his mind always, the great 19th century writer in England. So I think she has a good heritage. Uh, she has a good uh, th this background of the 19th century. <coughs> and uh, social concerns will never die. They don't die even today. And uh, the, the kind of uh, realism that emerged in the 19th century, if that continues in the fiction of uh, uh, this writer, then it's really remarkable of her. I would think that uh, stream of consciousness is fine, but stream of consciousness generally 
is confined to the high or, 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 or the middle, high, higher middle class uh, people. But she is writing about crime and in crime, you know, there is money, there is power structure and all those things. And the writer, I think, is stuck uh, to, to her time. And if the time has changed a bit, but has essentially remained the same, then I think it lives uh, in, in the context of uh, the writer like Agatha Christie. So I'm all with you on, on this point. Which also, uh, your point leads me to another one, which is that uh, when we uh, look at uh, literature itself, mm -hmm. the category of broad category of literature, that uh, where uh, modernist writing with its uh, experimentation in writing mm -hmm. had a certain kind of audience. But in the case of detective fiction and it's uh, the way it draws uh, certain methods and techniques from let's say uh, 19th century realism. I think an important aspect of this writing is that uh, it is uh, considering uh, entertainment as a basic value of literature, which is not the case with modernists. That they would not talk about entertainment at all. They didn't seem to have a sense of humor. <laughs> a few writers might be exceptions. James Joyce may be an exception. But they were always highly serious. And seriousness is so dull in literature. Mm -hmm. So one is supposed to you know, look at the structures around and, and, and that, that play with you, that, that, that play against you, uh, that, that, that try to confuse you, and uh, they also mystify. And all these things have to be considered as, 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 as challenges that writers of the, of, the, of the 20th century have to face. So I think uh, this kind of a writing is really grounded. And uh, the question that uh, uh, also occurs to me uh, as, as you uh, discuss these things, uh, did she have some connection with the First World War kind of experience? Uh, is that the case? Uh, in the sense that uh, she was obviously aware of, uh, very sharply aware of uh, what was happening and there are instances from her own personal life, uh, uh, not only in the context of war but otherwise that kind of led her to, uh, uh, I wouldn't say led her to this kind of writing, but they had a deep impact on uh, her own process. But uh, I think uh, the, the reason, and it's not just related, I guess, to Agatha Christie, is that in the aftermath of the First World War, there was a need. I mean, we, we have the character of Septimus Spinth uh, from uh, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the demand of, the popular demand was for uh, from the audience, from the reader, was for a kind of writing that soothed them, that also kind of provided them, that, that made them aware of what the society was all about, but maybe gently so, and also kind of uh, provided them with a point of view that did not drag them into the war in that sense, but also kind of pointed towards other things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is why uh, this is the period in which uh, mystery and uh, detective fiction, crime writing, it just absolutely blossoms. And suppose I say that there is a common factor between <coughs> the First World War and the Second World War which is building up, that towards which the uh, world is moving. Uh, the common factor between this war and the times that she, she is uh, referring to, uh, the common factor is violence. Yes. And, and and a violence which is not easy easily to be understood. So there, there is a mystery. Something is happening behind violence, and she she's capturing that from her angle. How do uh, you respond to this? In fact, uh, she's known for this that her uh, uh, the fiction that she uh, brings to her readers is fiction that does not actually uh, carry that kind of violence that is there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, the violence is indicative uh, and, and indicative in the sense that it's not really something that's happening. You don't see it happening. It's already taken place. So it's indicative in that sense. And uh, that is uh, meant to kind of, you know, deflect the reader's attention from the immediate scenario. At the same time, uh, I, I'm not trying to suggest that uh, uh, detective fiction provides an alternative space that you move away. No, there are enough references as said uh, that, you know, she never loses sight of the fact that, you know, it's a, it's a woman detective. And uh, both are, uh, you know, they are not very, uh, in, as, in terms of age, these are not young detectives in that sense, but they are very seasoned uh, uh, human beings who, uh, whose powers of observation are very, very high. And you made this point very well, you know, that uh, her writing is informed very much by uh, intelligence, by, by, yes. by the rational factor, you call it resolution. So uh, that way, uh, and uh, the modernist writers did not take to reasoning at all. They did not. They, they were talking about instincts, and they were talking about myths, and they were, they were talking about, you know, the uh, 10th century, 8th century kind of uh, life, and uh, which was 
and entirely understandable. And she is talking about what is happening in front of her eyes. Exactly. And uh, I think the immense popularity of uh, Christie's writing, her novels, short stories, uh, the longest running play, I think that very clearly indicates to us that this is what, really speaking, the readers of the time wanted. So, um, you know, as, as we said, that the, the puzzle is, in the case of Murder in the Muse, the, the puzzle is presented. Now, the story is that um, uh, what is, is actually uh, made to appear as murder is actually a case of uh, suicide. So, uh, how does, uh, you know, uh, Christy, really speaking, arrive at this? So, uh, you know, they, the, they pass in quickly, the door shut behind them. There is a very objective description that is there. So, for instance, um, there are lines such as this, a man came up to the top of the staircase uh, and the man at the s a stairhead opened a door on the left and they found themselves in a small bedroom. So, there is a lot of objective detailing that is there. This is the, the kind of detailing that we see in the English and the European fiction of the 19th century. But where in, in that kind of fiction, the, uh, the novels are very long, um, the, the dialogues, if, you, if one looks at the kind of uh, descriptions that are there, the, the, uh, they are uh, in terms of, uh, I think, words, they are way more than uh, the space that is given to the dialogues. In this case, there is a balance. So it's uh, where uh, detective uh, writing uh, and fiction draws, in a sense, from the method and the technique, but it is altered in the 20th century. So there is a kind of balance. There are dialogues and there is an objective description that is that builds up, provides that build up in a sense to the dialogue. So, for example, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, if you look at a few lines uh, from the story Murder and the Muse, it was much larger than the room they had just quitted. It had a built out bay window and whereas the other room had been a bedroom, pure and simple, this was emphatically a bedroom disguised as a sitting room. Now, this is exactly, as mentioned, a kind of description that we, we would see in uh, 19th century writing, but where that would be more intense and more layered, here there is a kind of objective description uh, providing us, providing the reader with only information that is required as relevant to the case and not beyond that. So, here uh, again another few lines here, the walls were silver, the ceiling emerald green, curtains of a modernistic pattern in silver and green, a divan covered with a shimmering emerald green silk quilt, number of gold and silver cushions and it goes on like this. And uh, as said that this is, uh, you know, quite similar as I said to the method of the 19th century. However, at the same time in very sharp contrast to the modernist writing of the 1920s. So, uh, the, the, the story is about how uh, this woman who's uh, going to get married uh, to um, a political person does not want uh, him to, uh, uh, she was married earlier and uh, 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 had a child, so she doesn't want all that to come in and there is a man from her past who comes to blackmail her and so, uh, you know, she uh, decides to take her own life. And her friend with whom she stays, uh, Miss uh, uh, Plendelith, um, is so upset about it that she ensures that the whole thing looks like a murder and so uh, uh, the attention is deflected towards, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the person who is blackmailing her. So, uh, if you look at uh, some of the uh, lines that tell us about Christie's style and also uh, about uh, detective fiction here, so for instance, um, uh, Inspector Jab says at one point, come on uh, Poirot, old man, you mustn't judge everybody else by the light of your shining intellect. As a matter of fact, that's a sort of little detail that's quite apt to be overlooked. Now, which means that uh, we are looking at a situation and understanding it in terms of objective coordinates. And it is the intellect, it is reasoning and rationality that provide the, uh, that are in a sense the, the cornerstones of uh, uh, crime writing. And here is a woman of the early 20th century that is giving us a series of 
you know, short stories and novels in terms of, uh, you know, the, the objective uh, rationality, uh, something that is not there, it is not to be seen in uh, high literature of the time. So, uh, uh, they, they look for a letter, for instance, they feel that, you know, if had it been a suicide, there would have been a letter uh, there. So, uh, yeah, these are some of the aspects, I think, that uh, are important in terms of understanding Agatha Christie's uh, writing. So, friends, uh, in this part of the lecture, uh, Professor Pal Nagpal has uh, shared with us her vision of the writer uh, in the early 20th century, uh, who draws something from the 19th century, but uh, takes the uh, you know vision forward, and she is writing uh, rooted in her own time, and it is that which is making her interesting. So, uh, I think th this is a substantial point that Professor Pal Nagpal has made, and uh, we look forward to uh, the, the, the other points shortly. Thank you.